So hello everyone and welcome to uh, what's going to be the first episode of my uh, new allotment channel. Um, my name's Steve um, and I've had this particular allotment for around two years. Um, and I wanted to start this channel just so that I could hopefully give a few hints and tips to people um, as I find them. Um, and hopefully get a few hints and tips and sort of other little nuggets of useful information from viewers. Um, I'm by no means a an expert grower. I mean, like I say I've been tending this allotment for about two years and every day has been a learning experience for me. Um, so what I'd like to do is give you a tour of my allotment um, as episode one um, and we'll see where we go from there. So let's start our tour. Um, we'll start with this sign. Um, I got this for Christmas from my partner a couple of years ago. Absolutely awesome present. I love it. Um, as we look down the allotment, we see it's getting a bit weedy. Um, it's been really hot recently with lots of rain, so the weeds have absolutely thrived. Um, we've got a couple of flower beds at the front of this plot. Um, hopefully in spring, there should be loads of daffodils coming up in there. We've got some bulbs down, and we've got the remains of some other flowers in here. Um, a lot of those got killed off during the, uh, the heat wave we had earlier this year. Um, the front of this plot, me and my partner spent hours and hours digging out um, try and level it off a little bit and to give us some soil for all of our raised beds. Um, very, very hard work. Um, decided against doing the rest of the plot because I thought that would uh, quite possibly kill me. It was a lot of hard work. Um, this bed we've got here used to house all my onions and my garlic. Um, those have all been dug up already this year and hopefully be getting some raspberry plants to go in here uh, later this year. Um, We've seen a very decent deal online to get 18 plants um, of early main crop and late fruit and varieties to give us some raspberries throughout the year. Um, over this side we've got our, well at the moment it's kind of a fruit bed, so we've got 40 strawberry plants at the front here. I need a bit of weeding around them but uh, hopefully next year lots of strawberries. And we also have our uh, rhubarb area here, we've got four rhubarb plants in there. Obviously they're all dying off because it is the winter, at, or coming into winter at the moment. Um, just behind them you can see we've got a couple of blueberry plants as well. And over between the flower bed and the uh, empty bed there is a lingonberry which needs a bit of weeding around it at the moment as well. Um, I have recently taken on a new plot, so I've got a new addition over here. I had a very, very mature grape vine on the previous plot, which I've, I've dug up and brought here um, so that it can train along this fence that we've got here. So hopefully we'll have a fence full of grapes in the next couple of years. Um, this did used to house all my peas, but they've never really done very well in here at all. Um, so I thought I'd move them for next year. Um, and I thought this was a perfect place for that grape to allow it to drain. Now, the other side, I've got exactly the same sort of fence. Um, but this has all my runner beans. So I've come down here and picked these two or three times in the last week or so, and there are still hundreds of beans on it. It seems to be growing beans quicker than I can pick them and I've been giving them to grandparents and you know <laughs> other family members and uh, well I've still got hundreds of the things. Um, as we come up through this little gate here um, we've got my little herb area on the uh, right hand side it's looking a bit sorry for itself at the moment um, a lot of the herbs didn't do particularly well in the hot weather and have been attacked by slugs and things like that um, but we've got rosemary, we've got basil, did have coriander, but the slugs enjoyed that. Um, and we've got some lemongrass growing over in the corner as well. Um, we've got some weeds, some thyme and a mint plant, but that all needs a bit of weeding. Um, over this side, we've got the remains of all my tomato plants. Um, these got a little bit neglected this year, I have to say. Um, the start of the year I was spending building these beds and generally building things on the allotment, so plants were kind of not an afterthought, but they were certainly not the first thing I was doing on this plot. Um, so these, I never got around to snipping the side shoots off, so they all got very, very top heavy um, and have fallen over, as you can see. But still, a very, very decent crop, lots of very tasty tomatoes on there. Um, next bed over here, we've got my cucumber and my courgette bed. Um, again, this was a, kind of a bit of an afterthought, and it was a case of chucking some seeds in quick. Um, but as you can see, we've got a few cucumbers. Um, next time I think I'd train these upwards to give them a bit of gravity to help uh, elongate those cucumbers rather than end up with circular or bulbous looking things. Um, as you can see the courgettes coming to the end. We've still got lots of little courgettes growing here and there um, but this has done so well this year. I've, I've done nothing to it but had probably several, well several tons of uh, 
courgettes. I've been sharing them here, there and everywhere at work and with relatives and things like that. Next pair, we've got our sweet corn. Um, this has done, again, really, really well this year. Um, started them off in uh, indoors and have then come and planted them in this bed. Um, they're all doing really, really well. They're, I mean, they're coming to the end, but we've still got lots of um, cobs here, there and everywhere. Admittedly, some of them have been eaten um, by wasps and other things. Uh, I've never actually seen a wasp eating corn. It was quite a, a bizarre sight, I have to say. I went to pick a cob um, and there was a wasp hanging out of it, having a munch on some corn. Um, the other side of here, we've got uh, a carrot bed. We're starting to get a few weeds in here now. Um, these were planted quite late, so hopefully we'll have some carrots for Christmas this year. Oh, I can see one that looks huge in there as well. So hopefully some decent carrots for Christmas uh, and a few in between. Um, this is going to be an asparagus bed, this one. There is some asparagus crowns in there. They were planted quite late, um, which is why I've kind of left this to weed a little bit. I didn't want to go sort of digging around when there's all the crowns in there, but we'll have a gentle weed of this before too long and get it ready for winter. Um, the final bed over this side, uh, we've got my potato bed. Um, so a few days ago, I picked, well, dug up about 10 to 15 kilos of potatoes. Um, this bed is less than two metres by two metres, so that's, you know, <laughs> quite an incredible amount for quite a small amount of space. Um, hopefully next year, I'll have a bit more space to grow a few more, um, but they've been really, really tasty. Um, and planted my Christmas potatoes in here the other day. So we've got three varieties. Um, I'll see how all those all go. Um, this meadow, all the grass around here, I planted myself earlier this year because um, it was quite a bare looking plot, very much like this area here was. Um, this has recently been planted up with grass as well, so it's going to give us a little uh, area to have a little sunbathe and things like that, should we want to. Now, coming up a little bit further, uh, in the middle here, we've got um, a line of trees, um, the same on the other side. These are just to split the plot up a little bit and sort of segment it a little. Um, these are actually all a really cheap deal I've got on the internet. Um, coming along well. Um, hopefully as they bush up, we'll get a uh, nice little divider. Um, as we come along a bit further, we've got my brassica cage. Um, I built this myself. Um, it's not perfect. The doors need resorting on them um, because they don't work particularly well. Um, and again, this is quite a late thing this year. So we've got some sprout plants, some broccoli and some cabbage. Very much doubt. We're going to be anywhere near ready with the sprouts for Christmas. Um, but maybe a little New Year treat, something like that. Uh, but next year, plant them a lot earlier. I've definitely learned that from that mistake. Um, again, this side, we've got um, sort of a cross between greenhouse and polytunnel. So sort of a poly house, I guess. Um, again, we've got the same issue on the doors here. Um, I'm going to be rebuilding that. And rather than having two large doors that we have at the moment, I'm going to put some supports at the front and just have one narrowish door to get in. Um, I'm not going to open it up just because as you can probably see there's quite a bit of condensation inside it's kind of keeping all the warm in. Um, but along here you can probably see we've got what's known as auto pots. They're a self-watering um, pot system and um, quite expensive. I actually won these in a competition but I would highly recommend them um, if you're growing chilies or anything like that or even tomatoes or anything that needs a lot of water um, but not over watering. Um, and then the other side, we've got a similar sort of setup. Um, it's a bit difficult to see because of all the, um, the condensation, but we've got um, a large tray with an auto pot valve in that. Um, so that self waters as well. Um, and all of that is fed from one little tank at the back here, um, which I have got set up to my automatic, my uh, solar powered water system um, with a little tap to fill up as and when, but. I can just fill it up with a watering can if I need to. Um, and that will, you know, water this little greenhouse for a good couple of weeks. Um, we've got some grass growing on the floor here as well, as part of my uh, attempt to make it nice and green around here. We've also got a, um, a planter that I made here. Um, buying these commercial planters like this are really, really expensive. I looked at the veg trucks, which look really, really good, but I, I, I can't afford to buy things like that for my allotment. So I built this out of some uh, pallet wood and a large blue barrel. Um, this probably cost me less than three pounds. I think I bought the barrel for five pounds and then it's just free pallet wood and screws and bits and bobs that I've bought. Um, I've not planted anything in it yet. Um, but it's got this nice fresh uh, manure compost in here. Um, 
but I'll be getting planting probably some uh, summer uh, winter salads and things so maybe some radishes or beetroots and some leaf, leafy greens um, next part along here is we've got my pallet pile which seems to be quite renowned around this plot uh, around the allotment site um, it's quite visible I'm not gonna lie there's a lot of pallets there um, I got a company to deliver all these free to me um, I think there was about 80 pallets something like that and a decent quality as well the only downside was I had to carry them up a steep hill all on my own um, before a night shift which was uh, fun um, over here we've got my compost bins um, I built these out of pallet wood as you can probably tell and um, they're not quite finished yet I'm gonna put a front on each one of these and a lid uh, to keep all the warm in and hopefully help break it all down a bit quicker um, we've, obviously as you can see one's been filled one's got a little bit in um, the other one has been used as a bit of a rubbish storage place at the moment but uh, as time goes on that will all change um, and we're gonna have a full bin compost in one that I'm filling and one that is ready hopefully and those will rotate as time goes on um, over in this corner we've got my little uh, solar paneled watering system um, now we're not allowed sheds on this uh, site because we're in an area of natural beauty um, even though the trees block anything we're still not allowed them um, so I've made this little wooden cupboard out of pallets which has got um, I will go through what's in here in a later episode because I'm sure people will be interested. Um, but essentially the solar power powers a battery, solar panel powers a battery. Um, there's a pump to the rear which draws water and the plant feed from these barrels um, and takes it down to different parts of the allotment. So for instance in that cage, I turn the, uh, the watering system on, you get a nice mist spraying down and keeping all the uh, plants watered. Um, and then the rest of the plot we've just got rubbish that was here when I, I took on this plot. Um, I just haven't got around to tidying all that yet. I'm gradually working my way along here. Um, so yeah, that is all of this plot. Um, obviously it needs a bit of tidying and things, but we're well on the way to being there. So the other exciting news um, from the last few weeks is I have taken my second plot. Um, I know it sounds like a, an awful lot of work and this one doesn't look finished yet, which it is by no means finished um, but I was looking through seed catalogues and things like that working out what I was going to be planting next year and I'd seen as I mentioned to you about the raspberries um, looking at things like that and thinking yes that's a really good deal I really want those but I'm running out of space I haven't got anywhere to plant them so emailed the council and found out that there's no waiting list and there is empty plots and um, so I've taken on a second plot um, in the last week or so I've not really done much I've given it a bit of a strim and a, a look round um, but let's go and have a look and see what it's like so I thought I'd show you the uh, long long walk that I've got down to my new plot so this is plot 89 my uh, initial plot and we're going to now take a wander down to plot 64 which is a really really long walk away and here it is um, so obviously it's nowhere near tidied yet, um, I got it a week ago, I've given it a quick trim down, um, but by the looks of things it's been used fairly recently and you can see what's left of some beds that have been dug out. Um, so my plan is probably in the near future I'm going to come along, rotate this front section, I'm going to split it into I think two beds with a path down the middle um, and we do actually have um, a little path along here. And these are all on my plots. So we've got some what look like blackcurrant bushes, um, all of which need a little bit of a trim and a bit of attention. But even so, it should be a nice little harvest of blackcurrants next year. So we have a bit of a walk down. Um, there's lots of bamboo canes and little um, bits of piping to make a, a little netting tunnel with, um, which is going to be quite useful. And there's a few piles of what looked like rubbish but actually this is where the uh, grapevine was growing that is all the bits I've trimmed off of the grape um, and obviously you saw that I'd moved that to my new plot so we've got a couple of compost bins here which could come in useful um, and we also have loads of this chicken wire which again should come in useful I think and um, I think this was actually split down into two plots before um, 64a and 64b but I've taken both on um, so I think this is between those two plots but um, 
there's another little pile of uh, rubbish here. But again, useful things in that is watering cans, water butts, there's weed membrane, bamboo, a little cold frame. So I think everything is going to be quite useful that's there. Um, the back side of this plot's a little bit more of a, um, a planted area already. So we've got this little pear tree, which isn't looking overly happy, but it, we are coming into winter. There were a few pears on it, um, there still are. Um, none of them looked particularly edible when I got here. Um, so that'll be given a little bit of a trim a little later on. Um, and we also have quite a mature apple tree as well. Definitely in need of a bit of a trim. Um, and by the looks of it, it's quite wonky, so I might try and prop that up a bit straighter if I can as well. Um, come a little bit further, we've just got um, a grass daver area really at the moment. Um, and these two areas, which I presume are where someone has dug a couple of beds before um, and covered them over. Um, so hopefully I'll have a look at those and it will be uh, plantable already. Um, and that is the end of my second plot. There's not really a lot to talk you through on here. Um, other than it's a bit of a blank canvas. Um, and I'm sure we'll have lots of fun uh, sorting this out. So that is the uh, tour of my two plots completed. Um, I thought I'd start this blog now. Um, A, because I've got the the new plot, um, but also B, it's the time that people are taking on allotments and tenancies are ending on the allotments. Um, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity for people to follow what I'm doing on my plot um, and compare it to what they're doing and maybe give them a few hints and tips along the way. Um, my, I've never done this sort of vlogging before at all um, and I'm by no means a video maker so the editing is probably not going to be the best on these videos. Um, but I've been watching the Rick Van Man channel um, from when he had his allotment a few years ago um, and did from when he took on the plot to when he finally gave it up in the end. Um, that was a great inspiration. Um, and also I've been following Sean um, on the Hawk channel, um, which I found really interesting and useful. Um, so if you get a chance, go and have a look at those. I'm sure if you've come across my vlog, you've probably seen theirs. Um, there's, well, certainly Sean's is probably one of the biggest um, vlogs going um, with sort of 29,000 subscribers or something like that um, but he has hundreds and hundreds of videos which are all really useful. Um, my plan is to try and put these videos up as often as I can. Um, some of them may just be short little ones of me planting the odd little bit here and there. Um, some of them might be full length episodes. Um, it all just depends really. Um, Sometimes I can get down here three, four, five days in a row, depending on how my work patterns work. Sometimes I can't get down here for a couple of days. Um, so I, I work quite a, a busy shift worky type job. So I work 12 hours days. Um, so for that, my set of four days or nights, I have, I'm dead to the world when I'm home pretty much. Um, because it's 12 hours of hard craft most of the time. Um, alongside that, I do voluntary work. Um, I'm also studying for a master's at, at university at the moment. So. I've got a lot of things on my plate, but this is the allotment is my place to come and relax um, and get a bit of fresh air and enjoy myself and unwind. So I do try and get down here as often as I can. Um, so I'm not going to promise you weekly or even bi-weekly episodes. There might be a month goes past where I don't put an episode up. Um, you might get two or three one week. It, it all just depends. Um, so I, th I guess that's all for episode one. I hope you've enjoyed having a little tour of my plot. Um, and I hope that you come back for episode two um, whenever that's made. Okay, everyone take care and hopefully see you in episode two.